Hey, this is Derek Murphy. I'm standing up on the turret of the castle that we're in. Um, and I kind of wanted to show it to you because I'm going to be talking about story structure and how to build a foundation for your book, both in fiction and nonfiction, that will allow readers to enjoy it on a deeper level. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you quickly, you know, give you a little bit of a castle tour um, while I talk about some of this stuff if I don't trip and kill myself. Um, it's pretty steep off the edge of that side, so it's a little bit scary. And I'm gonna walk down to my favorite part of the castle, which is this old ruined chapel um, where someone's moving the chairs around at night, so it's a little bit of haunted spookiness. I actually got a PhD in literature and based mostly on uh, mythology and ancient mythology, so I learned a lot about story and craft um, while I was a student, but when I tried to write my first novel, I still got stuck. It was really frustrating. I read all the books on craft and plotting um, and nothing really made sense to me. There's always kind of something off about the hero's journey um, or some, some of the other plotting guides that I, that I researched. So for fiction, um, I found a new way of organizing kind of a loose hero's journey into eight plot points and I put it out as my guide, um, the plot dot, which is just kind of a simple quick plotting guide. It's what helped me to get ahead with my fiction writing and it's also helped thousands of writers who have gone through my um, I think my I have like 200,000 views or something on the YouTube series um, just about craft and plotting. So I kind of know some stuff about that. Um, more recently, I put out a 24 point chapter outline and I found that even that wasn't actually enough because I was working with some writers um, and they would follow the plot outline. So they had all the stuff, like the right stuff in the right place, um, but it just wasn't resonating on an emotional level. Maybe the um, action scenes were too rushed or there wasn't enough sympathy for the, for the characters or a big problem was just there wasn't enough um, tension and conflict and suspense. And so I've more recently put together some newer resources um, which are more advanced writing fiction tips, both for me and for the writers that I work with. So those resources are available um, to you. Sometimes I think like you don't need to hire a developmental editor which costs thousands of dollars to tell you you know, what's wrong with your story, um, you can fix a lot of the crucial story problems yourself. And actually nobody else is going to fix them for you. Even if you hire um, a really expensive developmental editor, here's the chapel, which is my favorite place. Um, best view in the castle. Really it's spooky at night and the sky is just open like that. So I found a quiet place uh, to finish this video. And we're actually on day two of this little video series which is about um, writing a book that readers enjoy reading. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine a few months ago, and he puts out a lot of books, um, but he really just focuses on quantity. And I was telling him the big factor, especially for read-through or like how many people are signing up on your opt-in list or getting reviews or getting people to actually talk about your book and share your book, um, it's reader enjoyment. There's a lot of books out there that are fine, um, but you don't want a fine book. You don't want a book that people read through and they're like, eh, that's that's all right, it was fine. Um, you want a book they can't stop talking about, and there are ways to do that, but you have to do it deliberately. So I mentioned already some of my resources for plotting fiction, um, and some of those more advanced tips that I think a lot of authors struggle with, like tension and suspense. Um, so I had to kind of figure out, like I, I know how to do this stuff, but I don't work with uh, editors, I don't work with authors as a developmental editor anymore. Um, so I had to kind of figure out how to communicate these skills, which took me a decade to learn, and, and make them into like a boiler point template or checklist that other people can can use and see results a lot faster. So you can use this to plot out a new story or you can use it to go back and fix your story and just make sure you're doing the right kind of things. Because in most cases, um, a lot of others have problems with their first page or their first chapter. If you can't get readers to enjoy reading the first chapter, they're never going to get to your dramatic ending because they're not going to make it that far. Um, and there are ways, like of course it's better to do it on purpose the first time and plot it out. On the other hand, this is stuff you can go back and fix once your book is done. It's harder, that's why I like plotting. A lot of people prefer pantsing, which is writing by the seat of your pants, because it feels more immediate and more satisfying, because you're pulling all these ideas from the universe and it feels like you're being inspired to write this book. But just because you enjoyed it and it, you felt inspired doesn't mean you're producing a quality book that other people will enjoy reading. Um, and if you finish a book, like you may feel like, well, I could never apply a book because it kills my creativity, so I'm just gonna write, you know, what I enjoy. The problem is once you finish the book, you may have a big messy pile um, of notes and you may spend years 
revising and editing and you know there's something wrong with it but you just can't put your finger on it and then you're afraid to to market or launch it so you have these you know drawers full of uncompleted manuscripts um, that's something you can avoid pretty easily if you just do a little bit of basic plotting just to make sure you hit even the basic plot point uh, the plot dot guide is just like eight points if you basically hit those eight points you'll be in good shape for most commercial fiction um, for nonfiction, it's a little bit different. Most of my nonfiction books that I started out with, I focus on quality. No, I focus on content. So I did really heavy data dumps. Like this is all the information you need to solve your problems. Um, and I've since realized that that's not enough because giving people the solutions isn't enough without getting them to take action. If they don't feel inspired and motivated, if they don't feel like they can also do it, um, if they don't read the book like in nonfiction, the the preface the introduction it's all just to get them to believe in you to trust you enough that you're going to de de deliver enough value and that this book is going to work for them and change their lives um you have to actually do that stuff because when they're reading through the introduction or the preface or even the first chapter they probably haven't committed to reading the book yet even if they have bought the book they may not have committed to reading the book yet if they don't read through the book then they're never going to take action, they're not going to see results, and then your book isn't going to matter to them. It's not going to be meaningful for them because it didn't hook their attention. It's your job as the communicator, as the educator, it's your job to get them to keep reading the book. So there's a way to do that with little formulas, um, anecdotes, stories. There are ways to boost your trust and credibility um, and likability, but also make it enjoyable for the reader. Um, and to create momentum inside the book so that they actually finish the book and they take action. That's a problem with a lot of non even major tr New York Times best-selling, traditionally published nonfiction books. Um, I'm often dissatisfied with because sometimes they paint, paint like the the dream, but they're light on the details. They don't tell you how to actually do anything, and they're still more popular. This used to be a personal gripe of mine because I always felt, you know, my books have more applicable information but they're less popular than the books that don't tell you how to do anything, they just sell the dream. And the reason is people need more motivation than they need the practical how-to stuff. People need a constant source of motivation and inspiration because that's kind of the real problem. Um, and you gotta sell that stuff before you can get them to put enough effort into learning the details because nobody really wants to learn the new stuff that feels uncomfortable or intimidating. Um, you've got to provide them with quite a bit of motivation and inspiration so that they're willing to put the time and effort in to do the work and see results. So if it used to frustrate me that I had to do that as an author, I would rather just tell them what to do. Um, and I didn't understand why they weren't taking action. I've since realized that's really an opportunity for me to make my nonfiction books a lot better than what's already out there. Um, to create a more rounded reading experience which gets them to the results faster. And it's not all just about the information. It's also about, you know, how they feel about you and how they feel about themselves. Um, and you can do that with story. It's also not about the words because people will forget the words on the page. They will remember the pictures that you put in their heads, which is why it's important to do the anecdotes or like when you lead into your chapter um, to start off with a story, to start off with like an immediate situation. That's why a lot of nonfiction research books, before they dive into the topic, they'll be like, I journeyed here to sit down with this guy and this is what he looked like in his office. They're painting the scene um, and you can actually deliberately craft the pictures that you want people to remember to enhance the ideological framework that you are suggesting. If you are saying like, here's step four, um, there's this one thing they have to learn and remember, you can create a story that helps them remember that thing. There's some really cool stuff you can do with nonfiction. Um, the other cool thing with nonfiction is that you need to, not necessarily, it depends on the type of book you have, but it's a lot easier to make your money back faster with nonfiction books if you have some kind of an upsell or a tripwire. So, you know, they buy the book, now sign up to my opt-in, um, to have the, the right opt-in offer that goes with the book, the extra materials or whatever. It can be a short, actionable 10-page PDF, um, but then something like a course or a video series or something that you can sell for a little bit more money. Um, I recommend 97 or 197 is kind of a, a pretty general price point. Um, people have told me I need to have more tripwires, which is like a $7 no-brainer offer. Um, and the advantage is 
you can spend more money on advertising your book if some of those people are buying even a $7 something cheap. Um, but with nonfiction, you can also change the pricing easier. It's easier to justify like a $9.99 nonfiction book that gets results. Um, with a fiction book, you've got so much competition, you may need to do some pricing strategies like free or perma-free or 99 cents, um, which we'll talk more about later in the fourth video, I think. But anyway, this second video was just about um, how to create a book readers enjoy reading. It's kind of similar with the first one. Like, you would think this would be no-brainer. Every author wants to write a book that readers enjoy. Um, the problem is that there, there hasn't been good framework. There's a lot of books on writing that focus on the craft. They don't focus on writing commercial fiction or nonfiction. They might focus on writing literary fiction or nonfiction, but you probably don't want to be that kind of writer anyway. You might think you want to be that kind of writer. Um, the truth is, those kind of books rarely sell very well. So even if you're a very successful literary writer, you probably won't be making a living. Ah, there's a B. There's a big B. Um, you probably won't be making a living, even if you're celebrated. And you may say you want, you know, the celebration. You want to be the name brand, famous literary writer. But if it's not paying the bills and you still need a, a full-time day job to sustain that writing habit, I think it's going to be a little bit less satisfying and fun for you. Um, but you can totally do both. It's possible to write literary books if you want to, but they're harder to sell. Um, it's harder to prove the value. And generally because literary fiction and nonfiction books are less easy to read. Um, whereas basically commercial fiction and nonfiction, they're more fun, they're more light, um, they're easy to read. More people are reading them. More people would rather read a quick, satisfying book than the few people who push themselves to read something challenging but feel good about um, reading it later. I actually had a pretty cool insight about this uh, recently, which was that for commercial fiction and nonfiction, you as the author have to do all the work. You have to make them read and enjoy the book. You have to do everything because the readers don't know you or like you or trust you. They're just buying a bunch of books. If you don't hook them on the first page and keep them reading through the book, that's on you. It's nobody else's responsibility. Whereas for literary fiction and nonfiction, the reader does the work. It's more of an effort to read those books. The author's written a beautiful book, but it takes more time and effort to appreciate. So the value of the literary books um, is that readers know it's going to be hard, but they will feel proud of themselves when they finish. They will feel like if they got it, if they read it and they appreciated it, then they're, that's kind of saying something about who they want to be perceived as or, or even who they want themselves to see themselves as. So the problem is it's harder to convince someone to read a literary book because it's going to be more work. Um, it's harder to convince them. Like if they're not enjoying it on the first page, they're going to need a ton of reviews or a ton of credibility or a ton of trust before they will commit to reading this book even if they're not enjoying it because they know that eventually it's going to be satisfying. Um, it's a lot harder to sell a book like that without first building a really strong reader platform, getting a ton of, of visibility. Um, it's more work. So on the one hand, it's more work to write that kind of book and it takes longer to write that kind of book. On the other hand, it's a smaller market. Um, on the third hand, I think, if we're counting, it's going to be more difficult to get readers to commit to reading the full book and more difficult to satisfy them. Um, I might like to write some literary fiction or nonfiction someday, but at the moment I'm definitely more interested in writing commercial fiction and nonfiction because I want my books to make money um, so that I can, you know, keep writing the books that I want to write. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, it's getting a little bit darker. The sun's kind of going down. I'll kind of show you the lighting is amazing in the evenings. Um, but tomorrow we're going to talk about the third step in this little process. I've actually made these videos a long time. The first time I made these videos, I've had basically four steps in the Gorilla Publishing program um, for three or four years since I started it. Um, but I've gotten better about boiling it down and communicating it in a useful way, hopefully to you. So I hope you're enjoying this video. Um, the first one was about writing a book readers actually want. The second one is about writing a book that satisfies them. Um, this is difficult to get into on a short video, so I have much more 
um, YouTube videos and training and books that talk in depth about the craft of writing quality books. Tomorrow we're just going to talk about the publishing and the positioning. So this is book cover design, blurb, targeting keywords, categories, um, all the business stuff about like, okay, my book is done. How do I upload it and publish it on Kindle and make sure that readers can find it organically? Um, so that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. It's going to be really deep, uh, useful and a little bit more like in the weeds details. Um, whether you've published before or this is your first published book, it's really going to help. So I look forward to that and I'll see you tomorrow.